Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu. If there is something that you guys feel like we should react to, drop the link in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to react to it a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far thank you for subscribing liking commenting sharing and everything that you guys do which never goes unnoticed we're very very grateful i hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed i uh, thank you for 18,000 subscribers you guys are the best like i said you're the very 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 best um a big shout out to the person that suggested this they suggested a react to ben Shapiro disrespects Muhammad hijab on Twitter and pays the price. Um, so without wasting time, let's get into this video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ben Shapiro is an American journalist who pandas to the neoconservative movement in America, the alt-right movement, and who has been refuted many times by myself. Many times. I don't know how many views it's all raked up now. Hundreds of thousands, maybe a million views. I don't know. But we keep slapping him online, we keep slapping him online, and he keeps taking and absorbing the slaps. And I say continue. I'm going to give you another one today. Get your face ready. Get your cheeks ready. I'm going to slap you again today. I'm going to slap you again. And yeah, you can try and reply. Because recently he tried to retweet something which had me in the, uh, in a, in the Palestinian, the pro-Palestinian march, saying that for us as Muslims, life begins at death, which is probably the most, the least controversial statement any religious person can make. Every religious person, almost every religious person believes that life begins at death. And yes, of course, I was talking about the Palestinian struggle. You think this is some kind of uh, golden bullet? Is this your fight back? After hundreds of thousands of views, arguments upon arguments, attack upon attack, intellectual assault upon intellectual assault, this is what you try and respond with? How embarrassing. How absolutely embarrassing. What I want to do in this video today is outlined three main points. Looking at his tweets and looking at his behavior, especially with the Palestine-Israel conflict, it's very clear that Ben Shapiro wants to promote a culture of censoriousness, a gag culture, a gag culture, where he tries to alienate and ostracize those who go against the standard narrative, the standard pro-Israeli narrative. And it's really ironic that he of all people does this, being a spokesperson for, or pundit, for neoconservatives, using freedom of speech as some kind of pretext for, for refuting and dismantling the transgenders and the feminists and... Uh, others on the left. But when it comes to the state of Israel, he acts just like those people who he criticizes. He starts labeling people as anti-Semitic. In fact, he tries to confuse and conflate anti-Semitism with anti-Zionism. And he even says that there's a point of convergence between the two things. Let's see what he has to say on these matters. There's a point where being anti-Israel shifts over into being anti-Semitic. Okay, the conflation between anti-Zionism and Zionism and anti-Semitism, not everybody who doesn't like Israel is an anti-Semite, but every anti-Semite is anti-Israel. So you see here, this is a threat, a threatening behavior of, I will label you if you don't agree with my narrative. This is pathetic. Use your label. Use your label. Go ahead. Do your worst. We're not scared of your label. Calling us anti-Semites, when in fact we are Semites. I'm a Semite myself. Arabs are Semites, and Arabic is a Semitic language. 
At any rate, you can call me wherever you like. This does not change the fact that you have not been able to answer a single argument that has been made. And do you know what else you have not been able to do? You have not been able to make one singular, solitary condemnation of the 66 children that have been killed in cold blood by the policies of the Israelis that you defend. Now, you may remember some time ago, you made a video talking about the Muslim radical myth. And you talked about the Muslim moderate myth, or I can't remember what you named it, the title. But you were basically making the point that all of these Muslims are following Sharia law or believe in it, and therefore there is this many radicals and Muslim radicals in the world. What kind of ridiculous notion is that? In fact, if we assume that radicalism, so defined, is when someone supports or does action to terrorize a civilian population, a non-combatant population, then tell me how Israel is absolved from being terroristic or radical from that perspective. And how your support for Israel in its targeting of civilian populations is not itself a type of radical reflection. In that analysis, you are radical. You are radical. Stop pointing the fingers of all these Muslims that believe in Sharia law, which they might have different opinions on what it means. When in fact, you're the radical one. Because you're the one who makes videos about abortion. You make videos about abortion and you label it as killing children. Abortion is killing children. But when the governments that you support, which is the Israeli government, actually kill children, you have nothing to say about that, do you? You have no condemnation about that, do you? So it's not, and stop pretending that you care about children. You don't care about babies being killed. You only care about certain babies being killed by certain political opponents of yours. If it's a leftist uh, doing abortion, that's killing babies. But when it's an Israeli dropping bombs in the most densely populated civilian areas and 66 children die... You support that state. You are a walking contradiction. And how dare you even show your face in a public sphere after you've contradicted yourself so severely like that. You embarrass yourself. You embarrass yourself. And you know what I say? I say for all of those neoconservatives and alt-right people that follow you, do not let this man and his likes, I'm saying this very clearly, pro-Zionists and his likes, do not let this man fool you into making exceptions. Yes, you're making moral and political exceptions for the state of Israel. If your mantra is, we believe in freedom of speech and freedom of expression, and we, we're a, a, a avoid a culture of censoriousness, and we're, avoid, we're, we're averse to sorry, a, a, a culture of censoriousness, then you can't go ahead and agree with someone or show support to someone who promotes such culture and who uses labeling. Everyone who doesn't agree with him. Rashida Talib, Talib in America, you call her an anti Semite. You call another AOC, yeah, an anti Semite. This person's anti Semite, this person's anti Semite. To be honest with you, not much difference between what you and the left does by calling this person a racist and this one the bigot and this one the. Well, you're doing the same thing. You're pathetic. You're trying to crush public discourse by censoring and labeling. We're not afraid of your labels. In fact, there's a verse in the Quran, and I'm going to end with this verse of Quran. It states in Surah Yunus, chapter 10, when Noah, Noah alayhi salam, he says, If my reminder to you people, he says this to his people, Noah, if my reminder to you people, and my standing with your people and my reminder to your people is too big for you to bear. Then I, I rely upon Allah. I rely upon God. I rely upon God. So you, bring together your plots and plans. Bring together your plots and plans and your affair. And don't have any hesitation. Do not have any hesitation in your plan. Meaning, do your worst. Do your worst to us and don't even give us time. Don't give us any respite. 
We are ready for you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Have you guys heard of the term Ubuntu? Um, where is the humanity in everything that's happening right now? Quite alright, we're entitled to our opinions. This person is going to say it's wrong. This person is going to say it's right. And that's okay to have differing um, opinions. But are we having these opinions because it's not our people that are affected? Or it's not our people that are involved in this? chaos that's uh, taking place where's the humanity in anything we're always preaching humanity there's human rights to to make matters worse that say do not do this to humans humans have the right to do this and all those things the whole point of coexisting in this world despite our differences by the way like i said everyone has uh, different opinions this person is saying no this person is saying yes but whatever the case is, when it comes to the killing of people, I think that's when we should coexist, put our differences aside and stop that bad deed that's out there. Because no one, especially children, deserve to um, die. We should learn to live with one another, even with opposing um, opinions is what I'm trying to say. Humanity should prevail above everything. I wish we could unite and live in a happy world, um, but I'm guessing someone out there is thinking that's not possible, that's not going to happen. Otherwise, remember to take care of ourselves and our neighbors around us. Let me know what you guys feel or think, and yeah, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video. Thank you.